I'm Derek for Karate Magazine, and I'm here with Kelly Stoltz and his band, Rob, Rusty, Kevin, and Jamin. And they just played an awesome set for us, and they were nice enough to stick around and answer a few questions. So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I guess we'll get started with kind of a, a general question of how you guys kind of fell in love with music and knew that that's what you wanted to do. Was there maybe a particular album or band or person that inspired you and made you go, like, when you were a kid and say, that's music, that's what I want to do? I can answer that one. Go for it. I was three years old, my sister gave me an Elvis Presley single, and right when I heard that, that was it. I just knew exactly what I wanted to do from that moment on. Elvis? Yeah. Yep. Anybody else have that? Do the twist in the living room? Yeah, it was a hound dog, and don't be cruel. Ooh. I was jumping around all over the place. Wow. I think it was Ace Freely for me. Ace He's right Freely. over here. Yeah. yeah, for me it was the uh, White Album. I was two years old, and my dad had uh, some really good speakers, and that was it. Well, the first I was intrigued by um, mostly gay music at the beginning. It was Queen and uh, the Village People, which I only, and ABBA, which I only learned later, uh, had such a deep root in the um, in gay culture. But uh, from there I moved on into um, heterosexual music <laughs> made by David Bowie and uh, Elton John and folks like that. And uh, later it was, a lot. My I had a stepbrother who was into heavily into English new wave post punk music. So it was like Echo and the Bunnymen, uh, the Smiths, New Order, and bands like that. And uh, those were probably the first bands that I really loved and tried real wanted to be like. And you know, got hairspray and stuck my hair up and wore long black trench coats and started to smoke cigarettes so that I could kind of be like them. That was probably when I realized that being a musician could be cool. <laughs> John Lennon. There you go. What about you, Jamin? Was it? Um, <clears throat> I started playing violin when I was about six, after seeing my mother in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> after seeing my mother in a, a production of Fiddler on the Roof. And I played that for about two years. Yeah, da, 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 that was the last time I uh, touched anything with a string on it. Wow. Cool. Except shoes. Tennis racket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shoes. <laughs> well, Kelly, you mentioned uh, Eckham and the Bunnymen as being an influence. And anybody that's kind of followed you for a while now knows that you, you know, kind of did your track by track Crocodile right. cover album. Right. And you guys actually just got off uh, a tour with Echo and the Bunnymen. I'm kind of curious how that all went and how it all came about. And I guess for you in particular, if that was a dream come true. It really was a dream come true for me. Uh, the It came about. A year ago, uh, the uh, Icelandic volcano exploded uh, for the first time, or the, there have been two, I guess, separate volcano explosions or eruptions. And the first one that erupted last April uh, caused a lot of mayhem over the Atlantic Ocean for uh, planes. And uh, so the band that they had scheduled to open a tour for them was not able to come to the United States. And they were playing at Coachella. And uh, I'd become friends with them over many years of stalking and, um, you know, personal fan messages and waiting around outside of hotels and things like that growing up. And uh, so they knew I lived in San Francisco and had a group. And um, when their opening band wasn't able to make the whole U.S. tour, they called me and they were playing the Fillmore the next night. I think they called me on a now they called me on a Saturday with a vague are you in town on my voicemail. And I thought maybe that was going to be an invitation to come see the show or something. But uh, Sunday morning they called and said, we need an opener for this tour that starts tomorrow uh, at the Fillmore and then leaves immediately for Chicago the next day. So could you do it? So Kevin, who's been along t in my band the longest of anybody, I called him and you know said, can you go? And he said, yeah. And then I could, got a hold of Rusty, or Rusty was my roommate at the time. And um, so I think they all knew it was a really important moment in my life and they would have to drop everything to uh, accommodate my dream. So I was very thankful they were able to go along. Um, so we did that tour around the States and then they invited us to go to England in uh, December and we played a bunch of shows with them there, um, about eight shows in England and then they wanted us to come along again around the, st the States this time. So I think... Um, one of the stories that I related to the crowd was that 
growing up, I'd seen them about 12 or 13 times. And then, and then this year alone, we played with them 30 times. So it was kind of interesting. Cool. And they're nice guys and, and were supportive of my music and stuff. And, I, and uh, yeah, it was a real thrill. Have you had any motivation to do another cover album? Of anybody else? Of anybody else? Um, or, or another one about going to Bunny I've Man. actually done three of the Bunny Men's first four records, and I only released Crocodiles. I did have Heaven Up Here, which is their second record, uh, and I burned about 100 of those and sold those along the tour. And those you know, were outselling my own records about three to one, which was kind of a problem. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it was a little bit of gas money and stuff. But uh, I don't know. I've always done covers over the years, but I'm not sure what, what it will be next. Do you guys have any interest in the, if you could do an album, what would you do? Like, from you beginning had, to end? Yeah, from front to back cover album. I do uh, Below the Branches. It's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> Huey Lewis, sports. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in. Neil Diamond, uh, the Hot August Nights Live. <laughs> <laughs> cool. John Wayne, Texas Funeral. There you go. <laughs> cool. And uh, Kelly, you've been kind of recording for well over a decade now, and I'm wondering if do you, is there a conscious sense of growth in where for like you were at, on Two Dreamers and Antique Glow? Do you notice anything, or do you still feel like the same, like a kid making music still? And uh, uh, I, I guess the general feeling of joy that I get from it, and the way time flies when I'm in my room doing it, is still the same. Um, when I started, I had just a Tascam 388 machine and one microphone kind of like this and one acoustic and one electric and a really crappy amp and uh, one of those double-decker grandma organs. And I, rem you know, but I remember then I used to stick this mic in between two dresser drawers and then close them and then stand up real close <laughs> with the guitar. That was my mic stand. So I think if anything, I've gotten made a little money through music and been able to buy better equipment. So a real mic stand, a real mic stand, you know, and, um, some nicer guitars and microphones. And Kevin's been a really good friend and, and kind of a, a mentor to me with recording from, you know, since I started. So I've learned a lot from him. So I think the, I think the songs are better and I think the sounds I get are better. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, the, the happiness I get from it's pretty it's much the same. the same. Cool. And I guess speaking to that kind of experience and, and wisdom over the years, do you, if you guys could go back and tell yourselves 15 years ago one kind of piece of advice, do you have anything you, you would say about the music business or about making music? Or I just would have played more. I, mean, I didn't start playing music until like three years ago. <laughs> I took like, you know, 30 years off or something. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say don't get hung up on the process. Just try to have fun doing it because, you know, ultimately, you know, that's really what you're going to be. Remember, you know, the, the good times you have with friends doing it. Cool. I think that's good, good words of wisdom. Um, and then <coughs> I guess to kind of close things up, um, you guys played a song that doesn't have a home yet, Caroline. And I'm wondering, are you headed back in the studio or is there a new album on the way or what's next for Kelly Stoltz and you guys? Well, I, I just moved, uh, changed my living situation. So um, I'm getting a garage. I have a garage now that's getting converted into a music studio. So all of my stuff is uh, in boxes and has been for a month and a half because we've been on this tour and um, with moving and stuff. So I've got a lot of ideas in my head and I've been singing um, songs into my phone a little bit, uh, which is a whole new level of... Uh, recording and um so i just have a lot of ideas but nothing really you know that one just came along at the last week when i was still at my old apartment and had my stuff there set up and you know fiddled around with that song but um we've been so busy traveling and or unpacking boxes or packing or painting or whatever that i haven't had much time to do much with music but um as soon as i have a place to set everything up i'll get back to it and Hopefully something will come along in the next year. Cool. Well, you can get, uh, catch the rest of the entire session with Kelly Stoltz and the guys. And uh, also check out the kind of, I guess, we have an exclusive of uh, Caroline and look for it on the next record whenever that may be. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye out there.